This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin and the Liquid Network. Now the Liquid Network, it's a layer two solution. It's a side chain that is pegged to Bitcoin. And the way it works is you or someone else locks up some real BTC on chain and then you're issued LBTC, Liquid BTC, on top of the Liquid Network, which you can then use to send or receive it. Now this does not inflate the overall supply of BTC, that 21 million max supply, since you need to lock up that real BTC on the base layer in order to be able to use it on the liquid network. And you can cryptographically verify that all LBTC is fully backed by real BTC that has been locked up on chain. You can do it using this website, liquid.network, which is part of mempool.space. And we can see here that the peg ratio is actually in excess of 100%. You can look at the chart here to see how closely LBTC tracks the underlying BTC holdings. Now, the liquid network is a little bit different from the Bitcoin network itself. It has faster block times. It has one minute block times. And these are exactly one minute block times. They're not probabilistic like the Bitcoin network, like the Bitcoin blockchain, where you get 10 minute block times on average. But on the liquid network, you get these block times, not just on average, but exactly every minute. You also have faster final settlement. So you have two minute final settlement times, as opposed to call it five or six blocks for reasonable final settlement on the Bitcoin network. But on liquid, it would take two blocks to have final settlement. You also have much lower transaction fees than base layer on-chain Bitcoin. You also have confidential transactions. No one, not even the Liquid Federation members, which we're going to talk about it in a minute, no one can see how much LBTC or other assets you're sending or receiving. We can see an example of those confidential transactions here where we have the inputs, we have the outputs, and you can't tell what the asset is or the amounts. Those are all blinded. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel by clicking the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now, who are these Liquid Federation members that we've been talking about? They're made up of all these different Bitcoin companies. You have exchanges and trading desks and infrastructure companies and wallets and payment companies as well. These members are geographically distributed around the world and they're all united by the fact that all of them want Bitcoin to succeed so that their business models succeed as well. So this is a setup where Blockstream is the parent company that provides the technology for the Liquid Network. Anyone can fork it, it's open source, and run their own liquid version of the Liquid Network if they wanted to. But basically here we have the Liquid Network being run by its members, which are mostly corporations, no single members in control. And then if you take a subset of these, 15 of these members are also what is called liquid functionaries that are part of an 11 of 15 signature multi-sig that handles peg-ins and peg-outs, which helps to secure that Bitcoin that is being blocked up on chain. These functionaries also take turns proposing and signing new blocks on liquid and as we said they manage the two-way peg they secure the bitcoin held on the network using the federation's multi-sig wallet so the way you do a pagan is a liquid user sends bitcoin over the bitcoin network to the pagan address to a multi-sig address generated by that federation liquid user waits for 102 confirmations functionaries in the liquid network now accept this freezing of btc and allow access to an equivalent amount of lbtc liquid user claims that lbtc and, and it appears in their liquid wallet you need a special kind of wallet to hold lbtc for example the blockstream jade will enable you to hold it as well the aqua wallet which we'll be talking about in uh, at the end of this video and then you can also peg out to bitcoin so you can convert from lbtc and ask to get btc in exchange this is released after two uh, liquid confirmation. So I'll link to all this in the description notes below. As we can see, liquid functionaries, these 15 members, would need to collude to steal funds from the multi-sig, and this would destroy their public reputations, as well as landing them in court or jail for theft. So this is really the incentives that keep them in line. This is what's called a federation trust model, similar to Fediments, where you're trusting the Fediment guardians not to rug you. But in this case, the guardians are large, well-known Bitcoin companies. Federations are much better than just leaving your Bitcoin on Coinbase, which would be a single custodian, where a single custodian could rug you. But federations like Liquid 
or Fediments definitely do require more trust than on-chain Bitcoin. On-chain Bitcoin itself comes with its own issues, which we've experienced over the last 12 months, like periods of very high transaction fees and the lack of confidential transactions. So this is why you may at some point want to use liquid Bitcoin instead of on-chain Bitcoin. And you have to be careful not to confuse. Some people confuse the liquid network with the lightning network. The lightning network is a completely different layer two solution that's made up of payment channels, interconnected payment channels, each of which is secured by a two of two multi-sig on chain. And then these payment channels connect to each other. So that's the difference between the liquid network and the lightning network. Liquid network does not have true mining in the sense that the base layer does with proof of work mining. Liquid also does not use what's called merge mining. So it really doesn't use the Bitcoin miners at all. It's not block mining, but block signing, I think is a good way of putting it. And you have these, as we said, these 15 liquid functionaries that take turns building and signing blocks as well as managing the pegging in and pegging out process. Anyone can run a node on the liquid network and verify that all the rules are being followed. This is something in practice that I think very, very few people do. And in practice, the liquid network has not seen large amounts of transaction volume yet, especially periods like this where on-chain transaction fees on the Bitcoin network are relatively low, here being below 25 sats per V-byte. As you see chain, as you see transaction fees spike on the base layer, you can then see more transactions happening on the liquid network. But we can see blocks here that are fairly empty. Some of these blocks just contain one or two, uh, one or two transactions. I would expect the liquid network to see more adoption if on-chain fees, I would say if and when on-chain fees move higher, that will force more people to use liquid, it will force more people to use lightning. And now there are some interesting solutions coming out that allow you to very easily move between US dollars and BTC and LBTC and BTC on the lightning network. In other words, moving between fiat, between Bitcoin, between the liquid network and between the lightning network. And the best example of that really is the Aqua wallet, which I hope to talk about in another video. But you can download this and you can see how easy it is to swap between BTC and LBTC and lightning BTC. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.